Greetings and welcome again, my AP Calculus BC Padawans. It's great to have you back here for our final video for Topic 6.11's Tabular Method. It's Example 5, Part B, which only leaves one final example that ties up uh, integration by parts with a, a little bit of a twist. But for now, we're still going to enjoy this wonderful shortcut called the tabular method. And we're looking at this example here, as you can see, that wants us to integrate x to the third times e to the 2x. And really, this tabular method is not much different than the one that I showed you in example 5a. It just has another row of calculations and a little bit trickier dv. So if you recall from the previous video, we talked about setting up your table using headings like plus minus, a heading called u, and a heading called dv. Now it's not mandatory that you write these, but it does kind of help organize the findings in your table. We mentioned how the plus or minus column just simply consists of alternating signs of plus, minus, plus, minus, checkerboard effect. You must begin with the plus no matter the situation. And then for your U column, it's mandatory that you choose the X cubed in this particular case. You always have to choose the algebraic piece. After all, you're still following Liate in order to come up with your U. It's just that you're integrating in a table now. So we have this X cubed that we're going to put here. And then if you recall, we just continue to take derivatives until we get to zero. And it turns out that we get to zero by going down to a fifth row. If you feel like, oh, well, gosh, that means I need to put a plus here, go right ahead and do it. <clears throat> it turns out that row won't come into play regardless. Now, the thing that I really wanted to talk about here, we have to be very careful, is the selection of dv as e to the 2x. This must be handled very carefully because I see kids have trouble with this all the time. Remember that we're integrating e to the 2x. We're not differentiating. So the derivative of e to the 2x is, of course, 2e to the 2x. But the antiderivative is 1 half e to the 2x. So that's a very important distinction that we absolutely have to make here. You're offsetting with the u derivative. The u is 2x in this integration problem. And therefore, the derivative of that 2x is 2. And so you offset with a 1 half. If you continue that same line of thinking, you're always going to get e to the 2x out of your integrals, but the coefficient in front is just going to continually multiply the denominator by a factor of 2. And so we jump from 1 half e to the 2x to 1 fourth e to the 2x to 1 eighth e to the 2x, and then finally 1 16th e to the 2x. Now, once we've rounded out all five of our rows, we can play our tic-tac-toe. I'll use different colors of highlighting to illustrate that. You always go across horizontally, and then you go down to the next possible row. And if you think about what you've just done here, you have a U right here that essentially is going to multiply by what would be a V because the integration of this dv produces a v. Think about what the integration by parts formula looks like. It starts with a u times v. And we continue that same process with another path and another path and what would be one more path here in orange. And notice that I don't have to take any more paths because I'm going to run into this zero and that it's not going to produce anything that I need valuable to my answer. So now we just multiply the pathways and combine them with addition. And so our answer turns out to be, I'll write this in blue, positive e to the uh, positive x cubed 1 half e to the 2x. So I'll put the 1 half in front. And then let's just make the decision to start with our algebraic piece followed by our exponential piece. Our next term would have a minus. The coefficient 3 and 1 fourth would produce 3 fourths. And then we have x squared e to the 2x. Follow that up with a plus. Now I can go ahead and make this reduce. 6 times 1 eighth, that would be a positive 3 fourths. And of course, x to the first would be multiplied by e to the 2x. 
And then finally, the orange pathway is going to take us on a journey to get a negative result. 6 over 16 would end up reducing to 3 over 8. We have no power of x, and thus we end up with our e to the 2x plus c. Now we could check this answer with a graphing utility. I'm not going to show you that in this particular video, but if you were to do that, it's very likely that an e to the 2x would have been factored out. Maybe some simplification may have been done in between uh, with the result uh, with maybe a common denominator, but I'll let you guys check that out if you so desire. But that is going to be the answer to this tabular method. One thing I can't emphasize enough the tabular method is a wonderful, wonderful tool, but it only works whenever one of the pieces is algebraic, like an x, x squared, x to the third, x to some you know, positive integer exponent, per se. Now, I have a question. It's a preview of our next example. Oops, sorry. <laughs> little jump the gun here. Example six. A more difficult integration by parts problem. Notice neither part contains the algebraic piece. So how are we going to tackle this? Well, we're going to have to go back to our traditional approach to integration by parts, which is a great bookend to this lesson. But there's a bit of a twist with this, and you have to stick around for the final video for integration by parts. We hope to see you there. Thanks for tuning in.